Okay, today we are going to problem 12, 14, 16, and 17 in chapter one of Jackson Electron Dynamics. So problem 12, fifth Green's reciprocation theorem. If, if phi is, is a potential due to a volume charge density rho within a volume V and a surface charge density sigma, on the conducting surface S, bounding the volume V. Well, phi prong is the potential due to another charge distribution, rho prong and the sigma prong. Then we had the Green's reciprocation theorem relation here below. And we start from Green's second theorem. We write down the relation here. And we change our notation psi into phi and small psi into phi and large psi into phi prong. And the plus potential equals to the charge density minus charge density divided by epsilon zero and the partial potential divided by partial, partial normal vector equals to the surface charge divided by epsilon zero. <clears throat> and uh, we use this term, we use these relations, we apply into the second theorem. And we exchange that, we exchange the position. This term exchange to go to right side and this term go to left side. And then we times the epsilon zero both sides. And finally, we'll get the relation here is the Green's reciprocation theorem. And 14, consider the electron statics, static green theory, green, green functions of section 10.10, 1.10 .10 for Dirichlet and new main boundary conditions on the surface S bounding the volume V. Apply green theorem with integration variable Y and uh, phi equals to green function for X and Y and psi equals to green function for X prime and Y with Laplace on y variable. A Laplace y variable on green function will have the, will equals to minus four pi delta. And find the expression for the difference green function, two green functions in terms of an integral of the boundary surface S. Part A, for the regular boundary conditions on the potential and the associated boundary condition on the green function show that Green function must be symmetry in x and x prime. Again, we start from second theorem. Uh, here, phi equals to green function for x and y, and psi equals to green function for x prime and y. <coughs> and next, we have the relation here. We change our Laplace plus green function into minus four pi delta function and do the integral over, over y space. And finally you will get, and finally we will get the, get the green function for x and x prime, substrate green function x, x prime x, for x prime x, we change it. These two function has, uh, has their x position, x, x vectors, exchange their, their own x vector. And this difference equals to minus, um, equals to, <coughs> equals to minus one over four pi and, and the surface integral. And for the regular boundary condition, we know that the green function has to be zero on the surface. So these two terms, at uh, least two terms, when we do the surface integral, they will get, get value zero here. And zero times this term, we get zero in result. And finally, the total value after the integral is zero, is, is zero here. So the difference, 
between these two green functions after they change their x position, uh, their x vector. This this is that that means the x and x bar is symmetry for for green function on under the Dirichlet boundary condition. Next, for Newman boundary condition, use the boundary condition for Newman condition to show that the green function is not symmetry in general, but the but the green function substrate or another function f function is symmetry in x and x prime, where f function should be like this, and Newman boundary condition says that the a partial green function, partial normal vector should be minus four pi divided by the surface, the surface value on the surface. So these two terms, we these two terms should be this one, and next we get it get the result here, and the first term equals to x function for x. And the second term equals to the f function for x prime. And because we know the value for x function, so that means the difference will not equal to zero in general. But if but we exchange the position, this term go to right side. And this term go to left side, and then we define the new green, green new green function here. G prime, green function prime, G prime equals to G substrate F for X, and G prime equals to G substrate F, uh, 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 and we will get the relation new green functions under Newman boundary will equal, then that means <coughs> the new Newman boundary condition will be symmetry. So this one will be symmetry in X and the X prime. And final part C, show that the addition of x fun f function to the green function does not affect the potential. <clears throat> okay, we have the old potential here and new potential here after we adding the, adding the f function here. And we take out, take out this turn and this turn we will, divided by two, two, three parts. The first part equals to all the potential. And we only, sh we only should deal with the, this, the last two parts. And because this one is inter integral over the X pump space. So here, the F function the, the f function is of x space, not x prime. So we can take out of the integral. And this one is equally, we can take out from the integral. And the charge density on this position, we can write in another form. We can write in Laplace form. And the plus long and after and as we change, we use the divergent theory. We change our volume integral into surface integral, and we can, we will find that the last two terms will cancel each other. So finally, the new potential will equals to old potential. So that means the addition of a function to the green function under Newman's Newman condition does not affect the potential, does not affect the value of the potential. Okay, so next, 16. 
prove the following theorem. If a number of surface surfaces are fixed in position with a given total charge on each, the introduction of uncharged insulated conductor into the region bounded by the surface over the electrostatic energy. Uh, we introduce a new uncharged insulated conductor here. So the initial energy equals to this one. The final energy equals to this one. And here, here, the V plum, volume, volume V and volume V plum has a relation here. V equals to V plum plus V zero. V zero is the volume of the new conductor. And it, say, it says the new conductor will lower the energy. So we calculate the difference will should be smaller than zero. And we write down, write down the formula, write down the relation below. And we expand, expand the value integral here. We expand V equals to V prime plus V zero. So this integral will divide it, divide it into two terms, the first term here and the second, the, and the second term here. And this term, uh, obviously the integral, the integration, the integral part is positive because this is a square term, this is a square term. So we only focus on the first term here. And we have a relation here. We can change this one into these two parts. And we can notice that this one, just like here is a square turn. So it can be taken out because the integration should be positive here. So we finally, we only focus on the, this, this integral. Okay, uh, this integral we used, uh, we changed E plan into gradient potential here. And we change the volume integral. Oh, no, 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 we use the integrational by part into these two terms. And then the first term we use the divergent theorem, change into the surface integral here. And turn, and we define this term, term A, and this term, term B. For term A, term A, we can, change our integral into, into the surface integral on the, on the number of surface, each other, and summation, summation together. And because the potential on conductor surface should be equal, so we can take out, take out our potential from the integration, from the integral, but we take out our potential. And, and uh, over the surface integral, uh, we integral the charge density, uh, we integral the ele electron, we integral the E field over the space, we over the over a closed surface, we will get the, the, the charge in close the surface. So we have the relation here. And, but the charge enclosed inside the conductors uh, is, un is unchanged. So this difference is zero because the charge is the charge on the, on the conduct, on the, on the conductor each other is, is the same. So turn A, finally result in, in value zero. And turn, turn B, turn B. <clears throat> the diversion on E field equals to the 
then charge charge density on that position. So here, but we integral over the V plane space. There is no charge inside V plane, so obviously this integral should be zero. So finally, A added B equals to zero. So finally, we get the relation here. The difference between between energy, new energy and old energy should like should be like this. And and this and this is def, and this obviously is smaller than zero. And for seven, 17. A volume V in vacuum is bounded by a surface S consisting of several separate separate conducting surfaces SI. One conductor is held at unit potential and all the other conduct, conductors, conductors at zero potential. Part A show that the cap, capac, capac, capacitance of the one conductor is given by C equals to this one and where the potential is the solution for uh, this function is the solution for the potential. <clears throat> and uh, we can write down our electron statics energy in, in compact substance form and uh, in E field form. In, in capacitance form, we will get this relation. And because only, only one, only one conducts has a unique potential, and all the other is zero. So this double summation will only leave the, only one term here, and the v y equals to unique potential equals to one. Okay, <clears throat> and then uh, we do, and then uh, this this term should be equals to the. Uh, the, 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 the energy in the write, write it down in E field form. And E field equals to gradient potential here. So we just we just times two at both sides and we will get the relation relation here. And for part B, show that the true capacitance C is always less than or equal to the quantity C of psi uh, here, where psi is an is any trail function satisfying the boundary conditions on the conductors. This is a variation principle for the capacitance that yields an upper bound. A uh, trail function, that means we can change our, we can write down the psi function into this, this form. And f is, is, is an arbitrary, arbitrary function. And it shares the same boundary condition with the phi, with, with the potential. It shares the same boundary condition with the potential. And we just do the, 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 the integral. We just do the integration. We expand into three terms. And the, the first term equals to C. And we focus, on, we focus on the second term. The second term, we first use the integration by part into these two terms. And we again, change change volume integration, change volume integral into surface integral and into the summation over the, over the conductors, uh, over the surfaces, conducting surfaces. And because the boundary condition, the F function should be zero on the surface. So the first term here, this one, when we doing the surface integral, it should be zero. So this integration finally will give us zero. And 
because here is a vacuum. There's no charge inside the, in, inside the volume V. So the Laplace, the Laplace potential gives the charge density here. So there's no charge. There's no charge. So this term is, should be zero. And the volume integral will give us zero. And zero substrate zero, the, the, the value final, the final value is zero here. So the C of the C of of psi equals to O O the C initial C plus another function. And we want to check the minima. So we we will we do a deviation on, on, on lambda. So partial C partial lambda will give this one. And it only equals to zero when lambda equals to zero. So the C of psi minima will equals to C. That means the true capacitor capacitance will always less than or equal to the quantity here. So, so, so finally, we do the all problems here.